recording now and i'm going to hand over to you two just give me a quick hello so i know you're there sound wise hello hello perfect hello, enjoy everyone. your webinar over to you two thanks guys thanks very much uh monte what do you think of all these uh, countries in the chat box that is pretty cool wow, it's amazing so many countries so so excited yeah. to be here with all of you i haven't counted but there must be at least 30 30 different countries here so this is this is fantastic uh, thank, you. thank you everyone for joining thank you. Uh, and thanks thanks sean for the for the setup so everyone the the title of this presentation is getting more engagement so let's do it uh, shall we get engaged mm -hmm. there'll be four distinct sessions uh, we're going through warm-ups brain breaks wrap-ups and then a, a little bit of a, a conclusion so we hope you stay with us after the break for the wrap-ups and the conclusion so this is the university the oxford university press building on the oxford campus and this is our mission statement so monse i'd like to get going with with the warm-up using this as an idea yeah okay so everyone this is the building and i wonder how much do you know about Oxford University Press? How much do you know about Oxford University? And so I would like to ask you a couple of questions of, about us. And you can put your answer as many times as you'd want in the chat box, okay? Uh, I'm going to be asking you for a date. So the answer will be a number. And I will give you some hints about your guesses by saying higher, or lower okay quite simple higher or lower with your guesses excuse me chris um yep. is it okay to google it <laughs> uh no, mm. com no comment okay <laughs> google if you want everybody but you know try try to guess first if, if you can okay uh, so uh the year now it's 2021 but my question is what year was the first mention of Oxford University ever recorded? What year was the mention of Oxford University ever recorded? Okay, we've got some answers going on here in the chat box. Let's see if we can guess everybody. Let's see. Remember, we are a pretty old institution. We've got a 1249 from Andrew B. Andrew B, that you're the first person to guess. Let's go lower than 1249. Uh, I've seen some 1300s, a little bit lower, mm -hmm. 1450 lower. Someone said, I have no idea. 1250 is getting warm or getting closer, but still lower. 1195, low, 1188 lower. I don't know if my eyes can read this fast. Oh, someone had a 10 something. 1100 lower 900 higher okay oh yes. victoria s victoria yes. s you've just gone up the screen but victoria s you said 1096 well and i don't done. know if you googled that victoria s but <laughs> monse did you realize that oxford university is that old wow i i mean i knew but that old not really yeah we i feel pretty young compared to our university yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this is good. So 1096, everyone. Okay, same idea. Second question, but now we'll focus on Oxford University Press. So when do you think, remember this is higher or lower, when do you think the first book was printed at the press? Oxford University Press, first publication. Uh, someone said 30 years ago after the Norman invasion. I'm not sure. When, that's a question to me. I'm not sure when the Normans <laughs> invaded. <laughs> Let's try again. 1240 will go higher. 1615 lower. A little bit lower from 1650. Uh, I've seen a 14, 1650. 1097 is very uh, so up higher. 1480 I saw. A little bit lower than 1480. 1478, I saw someone put that. Can I chase them? Mm, yes. If I go up yes, the... Yes, awesome as well. Did you see someone 1478? I did. Yes. I'm just see if I can see their name if I scroll through the chat quickly. I can't find them. Oh, there he is. There they are. 1470. Oh, man, this is moving. Okay, whoever said 1478, congratulations. That's when it well was. Done. And uh, I hope that you were able to guess it through some higher and lower 
clues and, and not the Google. Okay, so those are about the university. So you get the idea that I'm just kind of giving you some hints, right? But you, the teachers representing the students, would be doing all the work. Now, I have some other questions too, Monse, the same kind of idea, okay? And so uh, this time I'm going to ask a couple of questions, but they'll be about me. Mm -hmm. And I would like you to guess, uh, guess the answer by giving me a statement. But this time I'm not going to do the higher or lower. I'm going to do it some temperature words. So like cold is you're not even close to the answer, okay? Mm -hmm. Cool, you can idea, you're getting closer. Warm, you're pretty close and hot, you got it. Okay, shall we model it? Yeah, sure. Okay, okay. So I'll give you, here is the, the hint. Now the first question is, pop it up here. Okay, the first question is, Monse, I am from Canada, um, but where do you think my father's ancestors are from? Well, I guess your father's ancestors come from Canada as well. <laughs> well, Canada is a cold country, but that is a that's a cold guess. I, I'm sorry. Uh, would you like to try okay. again? Yes, please. Uh, so I guess your ancestors come from Europe. Okay, Europe is a warm guess, not hot, mm -hmm. but you're much much warmer. So everybody in the chat box, would you like to guess? Monse has given you kind of a frame. We've got uh, Germany, France. I. Oh, I saw a couple. I saw one that scrolled up. I think I saw a couple of people had put Ireland, and Ireland is correct. Well, I didn't even get a chance to say cold, cool, warm, hot, Monte. They nailed. It. <laughs> so if you put Ireland, that was hot. If you put Russia, <laughs> cold, Northern Ireland, warm. I would say, mm -hmm. Uzbekistan. No. So my uh, my surname is Sheen, and, and that's an Irish surname. So if you got Ireland. Hot, well done, okay? So there's my, my button. All right, the next question, Monse, the same idea, except yes. I'll make it a, a personal one again, more about me than, than my, my family. Uh, can you guess what is my favorite meal for lunch? My favorite meal for lunch, Monse, any idea? Okay, maybe cheese sandwich maybe oh sandwich is warm but cheese is cold oh, good oh good start anybody let's okay. see what we get here yeah maybe, maybe chicken the is can help me let's see Has chicken is warm sandwiches yeah spaghetti is cold fish and chips cold crisps cold skewered meat pizza Sam so sandwich is warm oh i just saw it somebody put it up there I can scroll back. Someone, a couple people, you just said tuna sandwich. So spaghetti was cold, sandwich was warm. And for those of you, tuna sandwich. Yes, you're right. Tuna sandwich. Pretty simple. I think this is a throwback to the days when I was uh, living in university and single, right? And uh, so that's why it's the tuna. I'm trying to advance my slide here, but it seems a bit stuck. Are you able to advance that? There we go. Okay. All right. So, yes, everybody, there's the tuna sandwich. So, oh, something's going on here. Back her up. Okay. So, I did the, the numbers and I did the, the word answers. Okay. Well done so, if you guess sandwich. Um, mm, uh, Chris, I noticed that for the first two questions, uh, which were numeric, you encouraged higher and lower. But for mm. the other two, which were alphabetic, you encouraged cold, cool, warm and hot so right. i wonder why you did that hmm well i do have some reasons for it i wonder would anybody like to try to guess in the in the chat box diana says don't see your wife is not a good cook <laughs> diana my wife is an excellent cook i would never say that <laughs> i wouldn't i wouldn't say it in front of hundreds of people that's for sure <laughs> Or I'll never eat again. But any ideas in the chat box? So Irina says to encourage us to start working. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Constantia, if I'm saying your name correctly, to engage students by revising adjectives. Sure. If if I were aiming for the cold, cool, warm, hot, lots of exposure of that, that, that could be one of the reasons. To encourage more precise guessing. 
Antoinette, yes, I'm going from a, a really wide, really not much idea. And, and by giving them some ranges, they slowly get closer and closer. Uh, Kao Shailani says attendance, or I missed that, encouragement of the audience, I think it said. Uh, you guys have some really good answers. Yes. Yeah, that's great. Repair, icebreakers, warm-ups. Yeah, so a lot of these, uh, you guys, you're really, you're really adding to my answers. And so I have a couple of different ones. But Marissa says warm-up, period. Sure. Uh, and introducing myself. I used it to introduce myself. Uh, but as a warm-up, why am I using it as a warm-up? Well, here are some things, okay? So imagine that we wanna get as many people involved as quickly as possible, right? So I want the number of students to be high. If I asked you individually to put an answer, I'm not gonna get that many people involved, right? Also, I said you could put as many answers as you want. And for the one that we were doing of guess the date, you know, it doesn't take a lot of thinking to guess a bunch of dates over and over and over. So it gets you engaged quite a lot. The frequency is up. And I hope, Monse, I hope I wasn't, you know, taking over the activity too much. I think I just did a little bit of this, a little bit of this, and some cold, warm and stuff. And I looked at the chat box, but the students' activeness was much higher than, than ours, right? We were, we yeah, were paying sure. attention, but they were really mm -hmm. into it. So these are some reasons I think that I would want to be doing that. But there are other reasons. Yeah, sure. So um, if I understand you correctly from observing these approaches and from your explanations, good warm-ups include at least one out of these seven things and probably the more the better, which mm. are here on screen, introduce the class or introduce a new topic um, to review previous content, act as informal assessment, give language focus, maybe grammar, vocabulary, sure, sure. increase motivation. I think many of the teachers said that as well. Increase mm. participation in groups, pairs, uh, whole yep. class, and yep. then act as informal assessment. Yeah. And may I say, uh, Irfan in the chat box says, I'm sure everyone will remember those dates now. <laughs> yes. Yes, uh, they're, they're quite memorable. For us at Oxford, we remember them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, good, good, good. So, um, mm. before, we, yeah, mm, are you hungry? What's this? <laughs> I had lunch, <laughs> luckily. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, I'm a little bit hungry. I've got a lot of snack dessert. now. <laughs> so, before we move on, Chris, um, can mm -hmm. you introduce a little activity now for the teachers sure. here? Sure. Mm. Um, well, from now on, and um, this is your activity, teachers. Uh, every time, uh, every time uh, Chris or myself say the word student, okay, the word student or students, you will have to type in the chat box the the the, the chunk carrot cake. Okay. Yes, as you are saying. So. Really? That's so all I have to do is say the, the S word and, and I can make people put carrot cake? Yes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try it. Student. Okay, let's see <laughs> if teaches. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> we got it so quickly. It worked. It worked. So, it worked. From, so from now until the end of the first session, so until the break, every okay. time Chris or myself say the word student, just type carrot cake. Thank you okay. very much. That, that works. I wonder how many people will just copy paste. It might be, it might be fast. It doesn't mind. <laughs> it's okay if they copy and paste. Okay, great. Well, I have some more uh, warm ups up that I'd like to uh, like to share. And Monse, can you advance the slide? I'm having a couple of issues with it. There yes. we go. Thank you. All right. So everyone, the next warm up, uh, I call visual fractions. And in this case, I'm going to show you a picture progressively getting bigger. So I'm going to start with something that's one eighth the size of the original, and then I will increase it to a quarter and then a half and eventually the full image. Uh, you can guess as many times as you want about what you think the image is. And, and in some cases, even one eighth might be enough to guess. The key is as a warm up, 
I want to get as many of you involved as quickly as we can. Okay, so here's the first, the one eighth of the image. All right, in the chat box, everyone, what do you think this image is? There's not much to go by, but you can take a guess. Let's see, let's see. There's no penalty for getting it wrong. No. Participation is what we want. Mm, oh, Jasmina. Cat, bird. I, I did I did see I did see it in there, but I'm just going to avoid <laughs> answering it because I've got a couple more to go. Birds, we've got birds, we've got eagles. Carrot cake I saw in there. <laughs> it is orange, actually. All right, I'm I'm not going to say the answer yet. I'm just going to advance the next one. Okay. And if you if you if you think you had the answer already, that's also okay. Uh, actually, okay, good. All right, there's, mm, there we go. Okay, I'm I having some issues it. with my, yeah, all right. So this is the quarter. Now people should be more confident. Yeah, now I'm starting to I see in the so. chat box. I think so. Pretty consistently what the animal is, right? And if we were to follow this pattern, everyone, going from a quarter, and then if I want to make it to a half, let's say, uh, the half, you should be able to guess the answer by this point. I believe. Mm -hmm. All right. Hmm. Monte, can you advance that, please? Yes. All right. At the break time, we'll have a, a quick check why mine's not advancing. Ah. Okay. So there's there seems to be a bit of be a bit of a delay. So we just jumped from the half to the full, but that's okay, everybody, because I I think people are seeing it now. It seems like most people are are, are putting in the box, right? Interestingly enough. Uh, this picture, I took this picture just out my back window here uh, a few months ago when there was snow on the ground. Yeah. So that is a real live red fox. Okay, good. Okay, um, so what did you do that activity, Chris, and why? This time? Hmm. Well, that's a good question. I think we should always be asking why we're doing an activity, right? Well, this one was slightly different than the last one, right? In the beginning with the guessing the Oxford dates and what I like for lunch, that's really just random. And and that's okay. But now the students, they have, they're seeing proportions of stuff. So the guesses are less random. These are more informed guesses. And they're actually potentially building on the schemata that some, that mm -hmm. they already know. Maybe some, maybe some people know more words than others, you know, and if the chat box weren't going like lightning speed, the, the people in the chat box would have an opportunity to see other words that perhaps they could learn from their classmates. Oh, uh, Chris, actually, we've got a question from Diana or Diana, sure. uh, which says if we could involve noise making of some kind in, a, uh, in the classroom to go with it. Mm. That's interesting. Yeah, if the, if the photo had some kind of connection to noise, I like that idea. Thank you. Was it Diana, you said? Yes. Diana, okay, well, thank you, Diana. Yeah, if uh, if you were to combine music uh, with the photo, that could also work. Well done. Okay, great. Now that was the like digital version that I showed you. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, the digital version. But if you if we'd like to do it in a face to face class, how would you do it? Can... Ah, well, that's a good question. Uh, it seems like mm -hmm. we've been in digital for so long now that we sometimes forget. How would we do it in the classroom, right? Well, actually, in the classroom, it wouldn't look it wouldn't look as polished, let's say. But what I would do is I would myself I would attempt to draw it, and then I would put the paper into to chunks, right? So this would be your eighth, uh -huh. this would be your quarter. This part I would add to my kind of like almost almost like a half of this there, and then the full. Mm. So this is my attempt of it's not not so bad, yeah. But this is. <laughs> oh, <that's> good. <laughs> The digital one is a little bit better, I think, though. So, so um, yeah, so, so that's, that's what I could do if I were drawing it. Okay, great, perfect. Okay. So, um, let's see, that's a great idea. Thank you very much. Uh, sure. Thank you very much. Um, uh, using the so interactive whiteboard, Petra has, Petra, sorry, it, oh. Petra says interactive whiteboard. Yes, if you, have, if you have those at your option, everybody, the interactive whiteboard, you could be drawing an eighth and a quarter and having them guess and, and equally having the students do that as well, right? 
The key is, mm -hmm. is how many people can you get involved as quickly as possible? It's a warm up and getting them guessing, right? Okay, that's great. So shall we move on sure. to the next slide? Yeah. Okay, so um, tell me, tell me, what can you tell me about this? Well, if I wanted to make it, like if you thought that that was a little bit easier or the fox mm -hmm. was pretty easy, right? And yeah. you know, maybe some teenagers would say that was pretty easy to guess. So I could make it a little bit more challenging with the photo okay. itself, okay? Mm -hmm. So if you could show, okay, so we're gonna do the same idea, the visual fractions, but I will attempt to make this photo the way I display it a little bit more challenging, okay? Mm -hmm. So everyone, when you see this photo, same idea in the chat box, what what do you see or what do you think you're seeing All right here's the here's the eighth okay let's see some guesses from the teachers we're getting lots of carrot cake in the chat <laughs> okay we've got netball basketball basketball court gym basketball net Looks like a basketball hoop. Well done. Like these are, mm -hmm. this is yes. the point about being able to activate schemata and learn vocabulary from each other. Maybe there's someone that had never heard the word hoop before, right? But now their friend has put it in there. Okay, so this is the this is the eighth. Let's see. It, so far you're correct, but it's not the complete part of the picture. So let's see what happens if we show a quarter of it. Mm -hmm. And if you could advance it there, Mike, say please. Yes. Okay, let's see if the guesses are different. Yeah, let's make the picture a little, okay. Now, how about here, everybody? This is now we've gone from the eighth, we showed a little bit of the quarter with the net. Now we've got half. So yes, basketball, but a little bit more, I'm, I'm expecting or, de or demanding perhaps a little bit more from you here. So we've got kid playing basketball, basketball players, game and a match that's a nice one. shooting okay yasmin says shooting it's the first time i saw the action shooting boy playing basketball you know what monse i think everybody's answer looks really good here but yeah. it's not the complete picture i think they'll no. be surprised i need to show them can you show them the Let's complete picture it. ah there we go now i wonder i know a lot of people when they saw the first eighth and then the quarter they thought, ah this is easy I know what this is, mm -hmm. but I wonder that probably not many of you expected this full picture, right? So we can ask our students now that we have the full picture, we've got everybody warmed up, they could add some extra things. I could give some subtasks. For, for example, I could ask them to make some 5W questions or 5W answers. The 5Ws? Yeah, you know, the who, what, when, where, why, those kind of things. Uh -huh. Oh, okay, somebody okay. put in the someone put in Special Olympics there. That yeah, yeah. Par Paralympics. Well, well done. done. <laughs> yeah, well done. So you're you're sharing vocabulary. Nice. Yeah. So so it's really about getting them into it, and then what ex extra could we do? We could do the five mm -hmm. Ws. Yeah, sure. Well, I like uh, how you were able to still keep the elements of curiosity and mm -hmm. inform guessing. And it also seems with this photo, you could direct more towards the lesson topic, probably. Mm. Okay. Yeah, that's true. Uh, in the photo, if you do the photo the right way, you can direct them in a certain way. You could add the five W's. Mm -hmm. And I could have done cold, cool, warm, hot with their mm -hmm. guesses, right? I didn't this time because we've already done it. But that is a possibility. Now, everyone, the same idea of using the visual fractions, except this time we're going to do it by sentences. And so we'll call it sentence fractions, okay? So this warm up activity, it takes the fractional idea, but we're going to use either full sentences or chunks or perhaps just individual words, but the pace will be controlled by the teacher. So Monse, mm -hmm. here is a STEM okay. sentence this past summer. Uh, what do you think? think could be the next part of this uh could it be um, i stayed home unfortunately that's a great answer but unfortunately mm -hmm. that's not what i put but okay. as a teacher i'm very happy that if this is a warm-up that you got engaged and you took a, a guess right away 
actually, this is what I put next. This past summer, my <laughs> oh, Petra put, I fell in love. <laughs> oh, oh Petra, you're romantic, yeah? Uh, this past summer, my family and I. Okay, so everyone, what do you think could be the next part? Uh, Miriam says, I got COVID-19. I hope that's only for the sentence. Susanna, I could not do much. Mm, fair enough. Mm. Maria went to Indonesia. Maria, I got to hang with wow. you. Frederico went to the Bahamas. I got to hang with Frederico too. Why is everybody traveling? Everybody's traveling. <laughs> <laughs> this summer, I didn't go anywhere. Went to the sea, right? Okay, but it makes sense, right? Everybody's everybody's answers are making sense in the context. So let's. I'll show you what the, the next put I put here. This past summer, my family and I stayed at a hotel. All right. Now, if we're going to continue in this way, Monse, I'm going to ask people to put what they think would be next. So I'll give another part of the stem sentence here. I didn't want to because I worried a lot about COVID-19, mm -hmm. comma. All right, everyone, what could be the next part of this sentence? I didn't want to because I worried a lot about COVID-19. Remember, it's a, it's a but. Constantia says collaborative writing. It could be, it is a it is a form of collaborative writing. You're right, Constantia. They're doing it individually, but we're doing it as a collaboration. But everybody's getting involved. Everybody's curious. Everybody's guessing. Went hiking. Okay. No, actually, some really good answers in here. Actually, it was this. It turned out to be a great idea. It was next to the sea. The swimming, hmm, Saval says, but my wife insisted. <laughs> uh, but my mom insisted. What do, you, what do you think, everyone, after this? But the swimming, swimming something. Ah, Agnesia says the pool was something about a pool. You're very warm. You're very warm with that guess about the pool. Pool was huge, very warm. Pool was awesome. I had some really good ideas here. Actually, the pool was fabulous. Why was it fabulous? Because Diana says next to the sea. It was great. Martha says great. The swimming area was huge. This, these would all be really good reasons why I would say the pool is fabulous, right? Very, very sensical answers, everybody. Actually, what I had put before was this because it used salt water, which is kind of mm. cool. Most swimming pools, they don't have salt water, right? Well, I really like this idea, Chris. Uh, oh, thank how you. you how, yeah, how could you extend it if necessary? Uh, well, remember, I would choose this one if I wanted to kind of direct the students in a certain way. They, they still have lots of opportunity to guess, but what I'm hoping that I can do is to get them kind of focused on the topic. So it could be where would you recommend that I go next summer or or perhaps why. I'm kind of, well, Yasmin says jacuzzi, that, that would be great. Um, so I'm kind of keeping it on topic and keeping them on task, but now it can become a little bit more about them. All right, so that could be the transition uh, of a warm up. Okay, and we also have a question related to sure. this activity and the previous. Um, hmm. If if How can we do it with grammar? Maybe it is, it's a good activity to develop grammar? Hmm. Yeah, I've never really used it much for grammar. I've usually used it for warm-ups and this collaborative writing idea. But you could consider perhaps if within the stem or the chunks that I'm adding, perhaps I intentionally add a mistake or an, put, maybe mm -hmm. put an error in there. So it said, this past summer, my family and I stayed at a hotel. If that were the case, perhaps I would put a wrong answer in there. And then when we're all done, could they go back and check that, right? Wow. Maybe it says my family and I stay at a hotel. Oh, someone, there's something a little bit wrong with that. Can you give me the correction? We could do something like that for grammar, I think. Yeah, very good question. Oh, that's great. That was Mariam. Ah, thank you. So <laughs> what advantages, uh, advantage, sorry, does this warm up have? Great question. Well, if we use a stem sentence or a leading phrase, the teacher can kind of direct the class's thoughts in a certain direction, right? But it still encourages them to do their reading skills and their creativity, followed by possibly writing or speaking. 
Uh, and the students, they don't know what is coming each time. So it still has this element of curiosity that we're building up, just like the other activities, the other warm-ups that we did, right? They're still curious, but they have to focus a little bit more because the grammar kind of has to make sense. So it's a little bit more sensical. You know, the idea of what did you like for lunch, that could be just some crazy answer and it wouldn't really matter. But in this case, they know what's coming before, so they should be making a little bit more sensical guesses. So that's what I would say about these ones. It directs the conversation and it could be a little bit more sensical. Okay, great. That's great, Chris. Um, we'll move on with the next slide. Um, and now I think it's time uh, to to do some stretches. I don't know if you feel, um, you know, my back's a bit stiff. Monse, so could, I, could I just make one, one comment? I, I yes. just saw someone in the chat box, they said, what is carrot cake? So maybe they just joined late. Can you quickly explain? I think it was Edmund yes. asked, what is carrot cake? I'm sure they must be confused right now. <laughs> yes, this is not a cooking course. Um, <laughs> the task was uh, Edmund and anybody who joined yeah. a little bit later. Uh, the task for you was that every time uh, Chris or me say the word student, you have to type carrot cake. Just oh, like really Sean did fun. now. <laughs> Thank you, Sean. <laughs> He's paying attention. <laughs> so that makes it. <laughs> That's why you, <laughs> you, you see so many carrot cakes in the chat box. That's right. So thank you. And I was telling you that I feel a little bit stiff. And, uh, yeah, me too. If you don't mind, yeah, can we do some stretches? So sure. maybe we can uh, join our hands and fingers and go up. And stretch, stretch. I hope stretch. everyone else is doing this and not just Inside. us because it feels really good, everybody. Yeah, it feels good. And now to the left and to the right, like this, down. Mm. And then maybe we can rotate our shoulders backwards. Okay. Breathing deeply. And now. Oh, Natasha is stretching. Power. Oh, yeah, Natasha. It feels good, I think. It does. Okay. Well, oh, I'm much better now. That was Sorry very welcome. You, no, no, any any time. That was really. Constantia says uh, kinesthetic activities. Yeah, definitely. Yes. And Isabella mm -hmm. says, "How can you type and stretch at the same time?" <laughs> wow. <laughs> <Get an assistant. laughs> not at the same time. <laughs> I'm not sure, if, I'm not sure if, it, if it's possible. Thanks, Monte. Okay, okay. everyone. Uh, when we're talking about you know, this, this group, any teacher can join, but today our focus is about the uh, teenagers. And that's when we're talking about secondary, we're talking about teenagers, we're talking about tech. Um, everybody's in tech these days, especially teenagers. It's appealing to them, but I think it can also be appealing to us that we can use it. And so this one, I'm looking at a warm up from an emotional engagement point of view. Okay. And so could we be using emojis, for example? All right, so emojis, uh, Monty, I'll ask you if you can, maybe to put in the chat box there. Um, everyone, when we talk about emojis, you can use your own, right? The one that I'm showing here is from Oxford. We use a, a database, but you could perhaps do some screenshotting of the emojis that are on your phone or in your, your uh, computer program. Uh, Monty, she's going to add a couple of uh, hyperlinks like this one here. She put in Birdseed. Uh, there's another one she'll put in, I believe it's called Perchance. And these are, these are, thanks, Monse, these are uh, websites that have been recommended to me by teachers. Generally, I use the ones from the Oxford, Oxford database or perhaps, you know, show the students on my phone. Um, so what could we do with emojis? Well, imagine that these are three emojis that represent the recent emotions that I've had. And I can ask people to put in a couple of different things as a warm up. So for example, everyone here you can see three emojis. Could you please put in a word that describes one or perhaps all three of them? So one of them could be happy, right? But what other things would you what other words would you choose to describe these three emojis? They could be adjectives or it could be any word that comes to your mind when you see these. We've got encourage Diana says. Tasha says anger, angry, sad. Mood, ah, oh, nice one. Daniela says mood. Furious, they said. Furious is a good one. Mm -hmm. Everyone, we're catching as many of these as we can. It is going quite quickly. 
mad, uh, mad with anger or mad crazy. Annoyed, disappointed, f furious is a few times. Daria, hum, hungry, angry, frustrated. Ah, this is great. There's a lot of them here. This is great. Yeah, there's a lot of them here. So, yeah, so, so I think you can see even just by putting these three here, it generates a lot of interaction, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and so just three of them got more than three different words. Wow, this is perfect. So, Chris, I understand that using the tech to appeal to this age group mm -hmm. is perfect. Um, so why did you use this approach with emojis? And also, uh, you said a couple of things we could do. Um, what else, mm -hmm. for example? Okay, those are those are good questions. So in addition to the curiosity, uh, warm ups can work well if they are personalized, because then more people are likely to have something that they can answer. Right. Mm -hmm. And so what's also good about emojis is that although they can be pretty clear in their intended message, they can also be interpreted as more than one thing by various people. I, I think this was a perfect example here. Right. The first smiley, maybe you said, oh, that's happy. But somebody else might have said happiness or joyful or so on. So three emojis are likely to get more than three responses. If we take this approach, we're setting up a possibility where the students can learn from their peers. So various mm -hmm. interpretations and lots of variety, potentially, where they can learn from each other. And I, I, that's, that's always a good thing, if they learn from each other. I see. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's perfect. So, Monse, you know the expression, a picture is worth a thousand words, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, OK. So emojis, they can inspire more vocabulary. And then students can make the sentences with the, mo with the emojis. But there doesn't have to be a certain order. You know, the, the sentences will vary as well. Mm -hmm. So can I try one, Chris? Yeah, sure. Make a sentence? Yeah. OK, so how about this? Let me think. Mm. I was happy my favorite football team won. But my favorite player got hurt, so I cried. Mm. And there was no red card, so I got pretty angry about it. Hmm. I can imagine you would. Did you yell at the TV? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> you're not like my you're not like my Turkish friends then. <laughs> okay, everyone, in the chat box, I would encourage you choose a smiley. Uh, or so an emoji, and can you make a sentence about it? Or could you make a couple of sentences? Monse made three that links together, but that's not necessary. Just even one sentence. Any ideas that you may come up with? Oh, and meanwhile, uh, Melissa has a question about emojis. Sure. Mm -hmm. She's asking if it's good to show students sad emojis. Sad is reality. Uh, I don't see why not. Yeah, sure. And how about uh, students with learning difficulties? Is it okay to use mm. emojis? My gut answer is I don't see why not either. Although if I were dealing with, I'm, I'm not a special education needs teacher, but if I had anyone, if I was aware of anyone in my classroom like that, then I certainly would want to be talking to perhaps the school guidance counselor if there are any triggering images. You know, there, there might be there might be a child that has something there that this image sets them off. We're talking about teenagers, but this doesn't mean that the teenagers are always in control of themselves either, right? Mm -hmm. So that is a good question. I think it comes down to knowing your students, what's, what's able to, sh to show or not. The person who asked the question about SAD earlier, I can think of some context where I wouldn't want to show it, you know, perhaps mm -hmm. there's something in the news recently that that perhaps that uh, that emoji would not be a good time to show it. But but generally, it's a real emotion, so yeah, I would show it. Okay, thank you. Okay, all right. I'm not seeing so many. Sen oh, here we go. Sharon says, "I feel very happy and grateful for participating in this webinar." Well, Sharon, thank you very much. More sentences like that are always welcome. Paula says, I was happy last Thursday because my students get engaged in my class and forgot about time. Nice. Some movies always make me cry, Olga. Yeah, some do, don't they? The students are happy because they're having a trip. Miss, I forgot my homework again. <laughs> 
I was crying because my pet died. Could you, I woke up this morning so fresh, but um, oh, there's some great sentences here, and I'll go back through this recording to, to see them. But I think everyone is getting the idea, and that's great because, you know, the, the emojis again, they're they're words that people can interpret themselves, and they can be creative uh, as well. Well, oh, Dan, Danielle, you've got a long one there. All right, but in the interest of time, let's move along. I've got a couple more warm ups I'd like to show you, but well done, everybody. So, Monse, uh, do you remember how to read Japanese? Uh, maybe forgotten. Oh, really? <laughs> you forgot? <laughs> That's okay. Uh, this one's not that tough, and you can learn a little now, okay? So, okay. this activity coming up uh, is based on an original Japanese word game called Shiritori, which roughly translated in English means take the end. So, please remember that title when we try it. Okay, take the end. It's quite important to remember the title. And we'll look at some rules and possibilities. So imagine if you were doing Shiritori, take the end as an ELT version. Okay, we're going to make it as an ELT version for warm up. Perhaps we could do it with, you know, cities. Maybe you're doing a geography or a Clil themed lesson. So one student might say Paris, and the next student would say Sydney. And then the next person, based on the Y, is going to say Yellowknife. Parentries, yellow knife? Are those temperatures in the minus Celsius? <laughs> uh, yes. <Ooh. laughs> the yellow knife is in the very north of Canada. And minus 35, that is a real a real degree, yes. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I don't live in yellow knife, luckily. <laughs> well, you're lucky. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we could do with animals. For example, you know, buffalo becomes orangutan, which ends with an N, which means this last image here of this fish looking thing uh actually might say do you know or does it, do any other teachers know what this animal might be uh some kind of whale you're close you're warm it is a kind of whale you're very warm any other ideas if anybody if teachers know oh the last letter oh i see some people oh, the spell oh, patrick patrick m narwhal. says narwhal yeah. well done patrick m and a few other people too narwhal yeah so the reason I'm showing you this, Monse, is just that I didn't know what this animal was called until mm -hmm. my six-year-old son told me. And the reason that he told me was we were playing <laughs> unicorn whale. Unicorn whale. <laughs> is we were doing this shitty toy game. And when my son said narwhal, I said, what's a narwhal? And he was so disappointed at me <laughs> that I didn't know <laughs> narwhal that he felt the need to teach me. Okay, so something like Shiri Tori, a lot of student centered, a lot of student generated vocabulary comes up. Mm -hmm. And if we wanted to, we're talking about teenagers, right? So perhaps we want to make it feel like a little bit more academic. Perhaps what we could do is add some challenges. So, for example, I could tell the students that their words must be a certain number of syllables. Uh -huh. So, book is one syllable, book bag is two syllables, right? Okay, good. So, Chris, uh, can we give it a try? Yeah, okay. Sure. Okay, my word is um, book bag. Book bag. G -g -g. Okay, I'll, I'll say grapefruit. Okay, grapefruit. Good. Uh, t -t 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 tiny. 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 E. e, but it ends with a Y. I'm going to say yellow knife. There, I'll get yellow knife oh. in there. Okay. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> yeah. And so on and so on, everyone. So this is how it would go, right? The last letter. Sometimes you hear the sound. Sometimes you don't. Okay. But what's important about this one is that with Shiri Tori and, and uh, you know, Irina says the, the musical notes, the, the main part is, is that, again, everybody can contribute and they can get involved. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, so, Chris, um, I guess a couple of reasons you use Shiritori is mm -hmm. to engage curiosity mm. and then to use shared peer vocabulary. Yeah, maybe? that's exactly it. That's okay. that's exactly it. But there also, there's some other benefits too. You know, I can I can hmm. say that in addition to the curiosity and the shared vocabulary, uh, it's pretty easy to explain, set up. You know, we could do this online if you're doing it in class. You don't have to move the desks around. There's there's nothing 
Uh, Petra says, I call this a snake word. Ah, okay. Mm, uh, yeah. Snake word is a little bit different than shitty toilet, maybe, but the same, the same concept, right? I can change the rules. I can say one syllable, two syllables, depending if I want to level it up or down. I could put people, if you have breakout rooms, I could make them go into breakout rooms and play this because it's, it's pretty, once it gets going, the teacher doesn't need to monitor it that much. And then if you noticed when I said Paris, Sydney, I was enunciating that last sound. So it's pronunciation or enunciation. Student-centered, checking the vocabulary because you want to make sure it's your turn. Did you say, you know, for example, did you say buffalo or buffaloes? I need to hear it so that I can say it. And spelling. Yeah. Uh, Frida says we play this as kids. Exactly. I played it with kids, slightly different rules, but more or less the same. And we can make it an ELT version this way. So what we just showed is the ELT version. The Adding the syllables can make it feel a little bit more relevant for teenagers. That's why I added that in there. Okay. And we've got one more I'd like to show before the break. And this time it's about a theme. Okay, everyone. And I'm going to show you a grid that looks like a tic-tac-toe grid or a knots and cross crosses grid, we can call it. And remember, this is as a warm-up, so I want everybody to get involved as quickly as possible with as many guesses as they want. And so mm -hmm. simply, I will put in some letters that I'm going to ask them to write down as many words as they can. But not only that, keep an eye on the chat box and try to write a word that perhaps no one else has said. Okay. So here are the letters that I chose. How many people can make some words out of this mumble jumble alphabet here? Okay, let's see. Uh, I can see one. Matt, M-A-T. Okay, so Matt is used. Check. Star, check. Elephant, no, because we Matt. need a P. There's no Good. P. So make sure we use all only the letters that are in here. Maybe I, I should have mentioned that. Cart, ask, trek, cat, car. Wow. Skate, SK. Yes, skate is there. Very good. Moon. More Stark family. Wow. wow. All right, it's moving really fast. Hey. Yeah. So this works, right? This works because there's no, as long as they can spell the word they want, there's nothing mm -hmm. really wrong. Now, what if I said, Monse, the idea of taking something from completely random and like a couple of the activities, directing it slightly to the topic that I want to warm them up mm. for. So everyone, if I said, instead of just random words, what if I asked you to make words that were for a certain theme? And in this case, the theme I would like you to be would be space words. Mm -hmm. mm, let's see if I can advance this. Monse, are you able to advance the slide? Sure. Well, maybe it'll take a little bit. I think because the chat box is so active. Yes. The, uh, the slides great. slow down. The star, yeah. rocket, Mars. Wow, this is great. Isn't it? So, Chris, that, rather than ask you why you chose this activity as a warm up, uh -huh. um, I'd like to give my answer. I think sure. simply because uh, it has elements of curiosity, mm. right? And uh, students can share vocabulary as well. That's what right. They can. They can. That is. Uh, those are the reasons why. Uh, if I just say a timeout, everybody, I'm not seeing the slides advance. Monse, what are you seeing right now? Oh, I'm seeing the tic tac toe. Do you see? It says space at the top. Uh, theme space. Yes. I don't see that. Okay. Uh, there we go. Okay. Now, 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 now I see it. Now I see it. Okay. And can you advance it once more? Yeah. Now we have the quote, Chris. Hmm. Okay. I'll turn it over to you if you want to read the crow because my slides have not advanced. If you could. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> this yeah, is a quote sure. that I that I like, and it, it's it's related to uh, you know the real reasons why we need to get their attention, and the warm ups are the way to do it. Sure, it says, most developmental psychologists believe that a child's need to know is a drive as pure as a diamond and as distracting as a chocolate. A chocolate's really distracting, Chris. Okay, now I, now I can see the slide that just went there. Yeah, yeah, they can be very, very distracting. So, you know, we know that that's the case with little kids. 
it's the same with teenagers. They can get distracted pretty easily too, right? Mm -hmm. So we need to be aware of this. Okay. Great, great. quote. Yeah, it's, it's a great quote. And now, Chris, um, I have a question for everyone's mm -hmm. curiosity, but do not write the answer yet, okay? So no typing. Okay. Patrick, yes, and we are going to leave you with this. Uh, this is a riddle. So what kind of room has no doors or windows, right? So let's just keep mm -hmm. it here. And what kind of room has no doors or windows? Okay. And now we'll have a short break. Okay. <laughs> let's yes. use this time to think, everybody. Let's use this don't time write your to answer think, yet. Not to Google it, just to think. Yeah, don't Google it. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you, they, everyone. They shouldn't be Googling anyway. They should be working out how many times. <laughs> That's right. How, how many, well, they should, I'm, not, I'm not against Google, but they should be working out how many times they wrote carrot cake in the first half of the... <laughs> yeah, of, it was of, great. It of, was great. Of this. I am curious. I, I will come back and ask them. Hi, everyone. So we're coming up to the break time. Just as we go into the break, Christopher, I think yes. your connection is slightly slow. It's so about I'm, maybe a 10 second yeah, slide I would, I would suggest in part two, if it's not a problem, that Monse, you just, you're, you just take over the slides because yeah. if you both try and press it, you'll move forward as you ha as happened yeah. Um, yeah. with it. So I would just put the responsibility in Monse's hands uh, for sure. it. Okay, okay, folks, we are coming up to a 15-minute break. Marion, that's a Marion well-asked question. We're going to come up to a 15-minute break. And Monse and Christopher are about to turn off their cameras and go away okay. and sh do some stretching and have a break <laughs> while they are uh, stretching and counting how many times or how many slices of carrot cake they need to eat. Um, we are going to uh, ask, uh, go into a break ourselves. So mm -hmm. what we're going to do for the break, you've got 15 minutes uh, until we start again. I make it about uh, 52 minutes minutes to the hour so we'll approximately start again around 10 past the hour ish um, uh, from it so uh, obviously switch off your mic and camera guys but uh, but stay around and get get listen for me calling you back to the audience we're gonna have a break please go get a drink and some uh, some uh, some food probably carrots and cakes uh, and those kind of things uh, but we are going to while you're while you're there if you are sitting with us and we do encourage you go away and and do have a break um, but if you are sitting uh, here where while we're having a break we're gonna play some videos through some uh, Oxford University products uh, yes silky I was just thinking I wasn't a great fan of carrot cake but now I'm thinking how many uh, what uh, that I need to make some so we're gonna play some uh, videos through for you which uh, just show you some OUP products and things you will see occasionally some things pop up on the screen that are linked to the video so if you're interested in what you see in the video and you want to know more click on the thing that pops up and it will open up uh, open up the, a window for you if you're not interested just press the cross but don't feel like you have to sit and watch again we will we we do encourage you for the sake of well-being to go away from the screen to stretch to get a uh, get a drink uh with it I, yeah patrick it just has to be a certain i mean there are some carrot cakes are good but sometimes but um but i'm not disagreeing as a whole if i had a choice i'd go chocolate over carrot any day but that's me right <laughs> so we will see you again at about 10 past the hour Get, get ready for some videos, go and get a snack, we, and you will find out the answers to uh, Monse's question and part two very shortly.
My name's Andy, and I'm an Educational Services Manager for Oxford University Press ELT. I'd like to introduce you to our new Professional Development Modules. We're aware of the need for teachers to keep up to date with their professional development and the demand on teachers' time. Now, teachers can manage their own development independently in a time and space that's comfortable for them. The modules are self-access and take only 15 to 30 minutes to complete. You'll find them on the Oxford Teachers Club. A teacher nowadays is a person who is more empathic and gives support to students, trying to understand how they are coping with distance learning. What is more demanding, however, is addressing my students' social emotional needs. As a teacher, I felt I had to help them work through those feelings of anxiety, depression or loneliness in the ways I could afford. I think it's really nice if, um, if teachers make that time to either meet up asynchronously on a Padlet or uh, make the time to, to say, look, let's, you know, let's, let's meet for half an hour this week and, and exchange ideas or even just have a chat. And as a teacher, I tried to create an atmosphere of mutual support, understanding. I wanted them to leave their fears and worries behind and just enjoy a new way of learning. Being able to connect with other people and uh, having that reason to get up in the morning and get yourself sorted uh, in a situation in quarantine, say, where you might not really have the motivation to get out of bed um, has been really good for structure and just having that connection with people.
So we've got a few minutes left in the break. Hopefully you got you enjoyed those uh, videos, got some information out of them. Uh, about five minutes until we start again. There's some people up very late or very early. So Annie's at 1.03 a.m. and June is up at, uh, at 3 a.m. Impressive stuff. <laughs> um so uh, we will be high again <laughs> so you should be taking game really take your seats for a few minutes away from starting part two of uh this uh, webinar the getting more engagement wall of spring breaks and wrap-ups <laughs> oh francois that's very kind um <laughs> i i hope it helped um so <laughs> welcome back I'm, I'm still curious. I'm, uh, during the first half, I, I think I, I counted, uh, I think I wrote carrot cake 14 times. So I, so I am confused. How close was I? <clears throat> it's probably because he's tired very enough. Um, so I, I got 14, I got 14 carrot cakes. Is the audience on the same? Uh, was it more or less? I don't know. I know that I wasn't paying attention all the time, I think. Hello again, folks. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back. I'm glad it helped from uh, Francois. That's great to know. I look, you lost track. So did I. I kind of, kind of, every time I was having to pay attention to the room, I suddenly hear uh, another one. It's like, ah, how many is that? Um, so, Montaigne, uh, Christopher, you've got about four minutes if you are, uh, if you are, um, yeah okay christopher i can see your question um, um um yeah fair enough yep that's a uh, obviously you take that when you come back hello again hi everyone we're almost back again it's it, i mean you're, you're stuck with me for a moment but we're about three minutes away from getting underway hi you're, you're all so dedicated I, I don't count but type. I can't pull us. I need I need a number. I kind of because I'm sure Christopher and Monse don't actually know how many times they said it because they weren't. I don't think it was that planned. <laughs> so I'm going to be like, I won't be able to sleep tonight not knowing how many times I should have written carrot cake. So don't forget there is a there is a question there has been a question posed for you for part two i'm just going to go back to do it no nikita you haven't so just me entertaining you while we get ready to start part two very shortly we're still in the break still giving people chance i've got i make it that we're three minutes away from starting again our videos are played i <laughs> I that's very good, Patrick. I I will. Uh, I, I yes. I, I could do that myself. I guess. Christopher, chocolate cake. Yes. Good thing you like carrots, Constancia. Brilliant. So don't forget there is a and there's a riddle being posed, which will come up in part two of uh, the webinar. There are uh, Yolanda. What were you te with the technical problems with us or with you? A Zoom room. <laughs> very good, Maria. So everybody's now uh, now thinking of different kind of rooms. Now you probably you've probably got the um, probably got Christopher and um, Monse just going. Oh yeah, hang on, I didn't think of that. They will come up with their answers very shortly. So oh Sue, there's some good things there. So <laughs> welcome back everyone. Uh, this is the point at the time in the chat box where we those of you on there breakout room. Gloria, go go. Hi Christopher, you're back. Nice to see you coming back in, Monse. You really were eating chocolate cake as well. I thought you. Were, I just. I thought you were just being ironic. Oh no. Oh. I'd like some too. Yeah, you know, I, I, if the presenter accidentally loses his mic in the second half, you know why? It's like eating chocolate cake and not sharing it. Ah. <laughs> uh. Yeah, you think Daniela he would have got carrot cake just to actually be on 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 message with that one, weren't you? <laughs> so welcome back, everyone. Christopher, is your microphone working? I can't hear you. It says it's on, but I can't hear you at the moment. Nope, can't hear you. Yeah, sorry. Now you're muted. No, no. 
it's gonna oh, Monte, you're gonna have to do part two all on your own. <laughs> well, let's hope his mic Chris, is working. Christopher, uh just so you can hear me obviously because you're responding to me. Um have you changed anything? Pressed anything? Uh he's not on mute. His mic his mic's green. I can see his mic's green in the system. It's just uh but thank you for the advice, Cassandra. This is the this is the bit where you, when you get when you're in the online lesson when you want your students to speak, isn't it? <laughs> very good patrick yeah uh, so, uh, so christopher if you if you were to unplug your headphones is the microphone in the headphones or is it separate okay he has unplugged his headphones so hi everyone welcome back we will get out of the way very shortly we're just getting christopher's mic back on of course we can we can uh, make people keep people busy by just going student 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 so they now have to keep typing while we were while we're getting christopher <laughs> Uh, your microphone isn't working. It could be question. Uh, Christopher, do, do me a favour. Just go away and come back again. Leave the room. Come back. Okay. We well, don't don't panic. We've got built-in time for it. Should just go away. Monse and I can just sit here and entertain people. Why would I see? No, so, see, I did actually. Some dedicated audience members did actually type. I do feel very bad for them there. Do you have any idea, Monse, how many times you said it? No idea. No idea. I think we said the word student so many times. Um, actually, there was a question in the chat box. So while uh, Chris is back, I can address it. No, that's um, a good idea. Yeah, there was um, uh, this teacher, Isabella. Okay. Isabella, yeah. yeah. Yes, Isabella will um, mention that she thought it was a great idea, but at the end of the session, uh, she thought it was like too much carrot cake, probably. And um, because she said, are we not running the risk of students paying all attention to fishing for this one word and not paying attention attention to the topic well actually um this activity i mean you can really decide how to use it you can set a time for the activity and during that time students have to be uh keeping attention to the word if the word is part of uh, the unit if it's a keyword a content word you want them to learn to remember if, for example, I'll, I'll speak about this later on, um, if it's a problematic word in terms of pronunciation, for example, I think it's worth using it. But as you said, if you, if you see your students pay too much attention to um, trying to uh, spot the word instead of, uh, of the lesson, then you can just set a time. Like in 10 minutes, uh, everyone, let's pay attention. Um, but not don't forget, don't forget. I, I, yeah I, I i agree with you I'll, I'll, i've got i'll add something to the moment so folks you don't have to keep talk, typing carrot cake by the way i believe mm -hmm. monse said yeah, it was the first stop. half but you could stop the carrot cake now yeah um, now like... and christopher's coming back hey. i actually uh, christopher uh, your, your mic seems to be coming back in although you're now not showing a mic that's quite right funny. you can hear me yeah, I can. Yeah, you're, yes. you're like some oh. ephemeral image somewhere. <laughs> I don't even, I can't see or hear you. And according okay. to the system, you're not actually here. I was going to say, yeah. well, Chris... <laughs> this is weird. Okay, okay. Do, you, do, you, do you have a camera? I do. So now that it, it really seems to be that the system is recognizing the buttons long after I press it. So, okay. So this probably is indicative of your slow connection. I, I do it another way, Monty, as you know, uh, with the listening, because you, because you've done one of my courses. I, if I'm, if my students have to listen to recordings of me online or listen to things I do, I put the word, I, t I drop something in the middle of it. So rather than a uh, carrot cake, I would say, so now you've got this far right in the chat box, your favorite color or something, which is, a, I think is a, a same way of the same activity. Yes. Christopher, we can hear uh, you. Okay, maybe. Hi, folks. If you are just joining, well, Christopher, you, Christopher, the mic and internet has slowed down, so we are just getting ready for part two. Uh, so, if, Sean, sorry, if you can hear me, when I when I'm looking at my uh, video icon, it's saying disabled by host. It's not at all. It's probably mm -hmm. uh, that is. Uh, I will. Uh, I'll just run it again. Um, you're not. It's all unblocked for it. Yana, who's lagging? Um, just me or um, Christopher? Hello again, Dinara. Hi, Christopher. Are you there? Hey. <laughs> Very odd. Can you hear now? 
I can hear you. We can't okay. see you. But then, I'm, I, to be honest, if I can hear you, I'm prepared to go on again. Yeah, I, I think we can go on and... and uh... We're all uh, so everybody just imagine when, when I switch my video off. Imagine there is a video there that's got Christopher in, and just bear in mind that Monse isn't talking to herself. Okay, she's the pressure yeah. hasn't got to her. Christopher <laughs> is, is is there. Monse, okay, yeah. um, Monse, you be the slide person. If you need me yeah. to do anything, just say yeah, and I'll come in and help. Okay, so let's go on and see what happens and see if we can okay. go that way. Thank you very much. Okay. Over to you. Well, thank you, Sean. Thank you, teachers. Welcome back. Welcome back to the session. Um, first thing, first thing, uh, you can stop typing carrot cake. So thank <laughs> you very much for uh, everything you did, for paying attention, not only to the content, but also to uh, the word. And now, uh, the answer to the riddle. Now you can type it in the chat box. I've seen some answers already. Uh, Chris, do you know the answer? What kind of room has no doors or windows? I don't even know if I would call that a room. So, no, I don't have an answer. Sorry. But, what I understand as a room is has doors and windows. Well, but this is a riddle and it's a little bit tricky. Hmm. Okay. Here we have the answer. <sighs> <laughs> Of course, <laughs> of course. Okay, well, I know well. many, many of the teachers <laughs> got it right. Well done, well done, teachers. You got it right. Uh, thank you very much. Well, um, I'm going to set another task for you. It's similar to the previous carrot cake. Um, and in this task, uh, we are going to use the answer mm -hmm. to the riddle, uh, but uh, we are going to, to use like a longer phrase, right? right? So the phrase mm -hmm. we're going to use is little red poisonous mushrooms. Sorry, Monse, uh, the red. whole thing or just mushrooms? The whole thing, little red poisonous mushrooms. You have to type this in the chat box mm. every time you see mushrooms. So like these photo of mushrooms are these okay. going to appear randomly through the rest of the session randomly so but less than carrot cake probably less much okay less. <laughs> okay <laughs> okay right so i know there were other answers for the riddle you said chat room and and other and other um answers everything fine but we chose mushrooms so now remember every time you see the mushrooms on screen just type little red poisonous mushrooms okay okay sure okay great let's go on now um so um chris in the previous session we've seen a lot of ideas for using mm -hmm. warm-ups in the classroom like the image tiles the shiri tori which i learned today mm -hmm. but i'm sure uh the teachers realized that we showed other activities Mm -hmm. for the session i know they realized some of them they they spotted yeah. some of them uh which were not really warm-ups so let's ask mm. to see if they remember any of those activities i'm sure mm. well you know you know the big activity which was the carrot cake right <laughs> okay. but we did we did two or three more i think yes uh, one of them is not really an activity i'll show you now so the the other um, one of them was not real an activity, but I'm going to uh, include it. So the first one, which was um, the carrot cake. Well done, mm -hmm. Bora. You are typing literally. Uh, yeah. mushrooms. Danus, uh, Isabella. Right. Well, thank you very much, everyone. <laughs> that was the first time. <laughs> they all get an A plus. <laughs> yeah, well done. So in part one, uh, we did uh, these activities. Uh, the carrot cake. We did some stretches as well. We we did them together. Uh, we also drank some water. Actually, this is the non-activity, but uh, I kept drinking or sipping some water. And finally, uh, we showed you a riddle. And these activities were not warm-ups. Uh, what do you think they were? I don't know. Any guesses? I'm sure you know. Chris, do you know what these activities were? 
Hmm. Well, months, I would say by the title days. of our session. Yes, by the title, think of about the title of our session. I don't know. Brain breaks, Petra, you were the there first. That's great. Mickey as well. Phyllis. Okay. Agnieszka. Well, well that, that's great. Thank you very much, teachers, for getting it. They were brain breaks. Mm -hmm. And uh, brain breaks, um, uh, uh, what, what are they? This means these activities, what do they do? Chris, can you tell me? What well, I, I, I don't know. Are they, are they, are they meant to, to do something physically, perhaps, or, or, or mentally? It, it seems like, like the stretching, we had to do something. Yes. But the carrot cake, we didn't have to do much physical, but we couldn't think about what was going on specifically. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So first of all, brain breaks have to do with breaks, right? Um, they have to do with short activities that involve a change or a rest from, from uh, a more challenging or a more intellectual activity. As you said, Chris, uh, the activities we used were uh, linked to movement, for example, or just to think outside the content we were showing. But brain breaks also um, have to do with the brain, really. And when we think uh, uh, about the brain, um, we have to think of the brain focusing on intellectual activities. And after working intensely with those intellectual activities, uh, it gets tired. So a good way of rewiring is to do a totally different activity or exercise to change the focus and activate mm. the body. So when you change the activity to something short, fun, that might involve movement, the brain feels mm -hmm. refreshed. Right? I can see yeah. many of you are typing little red poisonous mushrooms. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, teachers. Yeah. So it seems like they involve movement, huh? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. they so movement. then uh, the stretches we did in the previous sessions, they, they seem like they'd be a perfect brain break. You know, we went from mental to a more physical one. So movement act activates the body and the blood flow. Is that right? Yeah, Chris, exactly. So when you increase blood flow, you also increase oxygen and the brain gets more active and refreshed. Uh, drinking water has a similar effect. It hydrates your body. Uh, it improves blood flow. Um, all these activities uh, can work really well with uh, the face-to-face -face classroom but also in an online class classroom. Like for example, the stretches, you can do them with the camera on and ask the students to uh, do them together with you as we did here, for example, um, you and I, Chris. Mm. Mm -hmm. And okay. the stretches that can use, uh, you can use in the class uh, can involve different degrees of movement, movement. So you can do some arm and back stretches like we did, very quiet and easy to do or you can do um, stretches with students standing up. It really depends on uh, your objectives. Right? Hmm. So now. So um, then, are, so brain breaks, from what I'm understanding, basically they're like exercise for the brain and the body? Yes, in, in a way, we are training the brain to disconnect and reconnect. So just by doing something diff different, short as, look, as Mickey says, dance and music, for example, stretching, um, as we do something different, short, that involves some movement, the brain changes the connection. And then when going back to a more intellectual activity, it feels stronger and more eager to, to participate and, and to work. Mm. Um, and our students have the time to rest and re-engage in the following activity. We can also use brain breaks to foster uh, the connection between both hemispheres and stimulate uh, neurological pathway, pathways. There are very common activities we can do. And the key is that the right side and the left sides interact or do different things at the same time. Sorry, Monte, uh, you said interact. Uh, what mm -hmm. do you mean by that specifically? Well, it means that parts of the right side of your body touch mm. 
or interact with parts on the left side, or that both sides do totally different things. Well, I'll show you some examples to give a clear idea. Um, I'm afraid we won't have uh, uh, we won't have Chris helping me <laughs> with with these activities, but well, I'll try to do them myself. And please, you at home, try to uh, follow them. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Sean, if you if you can put the whole screen for me, thank you. Well. One of the activities, as we said, it, uh, it, they involved both sides of mm. your body. One of them, my right hand, is going to go up and down. This is a very typical break, up and down. And my left uh, hand is going to go uh, from right to left. And you have to do them. I'm doing it with you, Monte, believe it or not. Are you? Yes, oh, I am. Oh, great. <laughs> Good. Then you can change the side. Uh, this side for me is very, very difficult. Okay, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to do it. Oh my God, mm. okay, great. So during this activity, both hemispheres interact. And after the activity, um, the brain uh, can feel stronger. Another activity very similar to this is uh, you can touch your nose with your right hand and with your left hand, you touch your right ear like this mm. then change okay okay at the beginning it's a bit difficult yeah, it's not so, so easy hey oh it's not that easy well there are many activities um that you can do uh, to foster this and one last activity i'm going to share with you mm -hmm. is no it's not easy celia or lena uh yeah. and tamara uh, it took me a while <laughs> to do this more or less correctly um, another activity is the lazy eight. So uh, you put your thumb in front mm -hmm. of your nose and start okay. drawing an eight, a lazy eight. Mm. And, but as you can see, my thumb goes from the right to the left side. But at the same time, we want our eyes to follow our thumb. So our eyes also cross the border from one hemisphere to the other. Mm. And we not only activate our, our body, but also our sight. This is a great activity to prepare students for reading and for mm. reading activities. Really, really interesting. Indeed, these are these are quite interesting. So, Monse, they seem to be pretty short, though. Um, mm -hmm. So, typically, how long should a brain break be, anyway? Um, Sean, can we get the slides back, please? So brain breaks uh, shouldn't take longer than maybe a couple of minutes, four mm -hmm. or five maximum, maximum. Okay. Um, yeah, the, I mean, they are short activities. If, if they are longer, they become a proper activity. And we don't mm. want that. We want short activities. Like remember the stretches, um, they took what, uh, 30 seconds? You can do yeah. one minute. So that's the idea, to have short activities, to have that break. If mm. not, they become like longer activities. Right. Um, uh, we have another activity, very short activity, uh, mm. that you can also use, uh, which is uh, flipping your pencil. Okay. Monse, I practiced this one, and, and now oh. isn't, isn't the tragic comedy of it all that my screen is not working? <laughs> And I, I was able to do this many times. <laughs> you did do it. <laughs> and now I can't show it. <laughs> wow. Left no hand worries. too. <laughs> okay. Do it, do it at home and then you tell us how many times. I'm going to do it okay. here so that I can show teachers, right? Okay. okay. Uh, so, Sean, can I get the timer, please? We're going to set this activity for 10 seconds. Okay. okay? Uh, as you can see, I mean, it, it can't be shorter. So let's see if Sean can uh, show us. Anything. I'll put the timer on, but it will stop them seeing the activity. So do you need to show them first? Uh, yeah, OK. Yeah, OK, I'll show them the activity. So the activity is just to get a pencil or a pen. And in 10 seconds, um, just check how many times you can flip it like this. Mm. One, two, like yeah. this. Right? Yeah. Ready. Okay. Are you ready, uh, Chris? Ready, Freddy. 
Okay, uh, so can we have the timer now? Okay, great. Uh, just five. <laughs> <laughs> I got I got five in the left, and then I I got a little bit conf overconfident, switched to the right hand, and dropped it. Okay, okay. So thank you, thank you for trying it. Oh my God, Ellie, four. You don't got ten, Maggie. And Marjorie and Maggie, I can't believe 14, it. Fourteen, really? So bad. Wow. And I practice. Wow, you're so good. <laughs> I only got like Agnes. I only got five. Well, teachers, you're so good at this. Well, as really? you can see, um, this is a super short activity that mm. you can do. You can do maybe uh, right on, with your right hand, maybe then yeah. with your left hand. Mm. Okay, and uh, it's really really short. It breaks. The, the moment when students feel tired. Oh. oh, I can I can hear something. I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah. But so one of the moderators turned the mic on. Okay. I've stopped it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I thought it was me. Um, okay. So uh, after this very very short activity, thank you, Natalia, Elena, Sue. You spotted the mushrooms. They were a little yeah. bit even this time, but you did really well. So uh, let's go on with um, another activity. This mm. one, yeah, we've seen that brain breaks use movement, um, can, and, but can also have a more specific focus. The ones we've seen this far are more physical and the cognitive demand was quite low. However, mm. we can also use more challenging brain break activities. Uh, are you familiar with the mannequin challenge? Chris, do you mm, I'm really trying to think here. It, it sounds familiar. Was it popular like a few years ago where people were on a video, but they weren't moving, but the camera was on something mm -hmm. like that? Yes, exactly. Well, uh, the mannequin challenge, as Chris said, it uh, was like a recording uh, that mm. somebody did of people uh, being still quiet, not moving, mm. but as if they were in some kind of situation, okay? Okay. So the idea of this activity is to do something similar. Um, the idea is also to link this activity to the topic of the unit in the class. So for example, let's, um, let's imagine the unit is about sports, okay? okay. And then mm -hmm. students have to think of, every student has to think of one pose, and perform it like for example uh if it's sports i can be doing something like mm, like shooting that basketball picture yeah great okay so this would be like basketball i would sit uh sit or stand still mm -hmm. like doing like this and the other students in the class would choose the sport they want and do the same keeping mm. still with the pose then the teacher can take a picture of the whole class mm -hmm. uh, performing but being very quiet or you can record a video um, and that's the brain break okay so it's a way of um using uh, uh it is like like checking for understanding for example uh knowing how much vocabulary they know and then if you take the picture or if you uh, record it, you can save that recording or that picture and use it for an extension activity later on. Like maybe a speaking activity in pairs, uh, writing activity as a description, right? Because it was, mm. um, we were using the vocabulary of the unit. We can go right. a little bit further, right? And okay. we can ask uh, students to perform a text. Okay, we can choose a very short, it has to be very short. Let's remember they are brain breaks. Um, they have to be very short. Uh, it can be from the textbook, maybe some introductory text, or you can come up with a short text yourself. Okay, um, for example, and the, you have to imagine uh, Chris doing it, and please do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to read you a text, okay? Mm -hmm. And you have to uh, perform it. 
right? I will be doing it myself, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. The text goes like, there was a very sad person attending a webinar session. She had a pen in his right hand and he was touching his nose with the tip of his left forefinger. Mm. <laughs> this, this would be the photo and you would take the photo. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure you look great, Chris. Yeah, this. I do. Thank you. And <laughs> I'm sure the teachers also look great uh, doing it. And well, as you can see, that was really, really short. Um, mm. But it was engaging. I mean, it was really engaging. You can use a song, as Diana says here. Uh, you can use a song, and they have to come up with the movements as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that was uh, uh, the idea of the mannequin challenge. Are there? Uh... Yeah, that one was that was pretty engaging. What other ones can, can you think of? Uh, some other activities. Uh, let me see. Okay. Uh, okay. Some more activities we can do. This one is um, very short as well, but mm -hmm. uh, not as short as the pencil one. But it, it can be short. It can take around two minutes and. In this, uh, in this activity, the time is very important. You have to set specific time uh, okay. for the students to perform the activity. Uh, the idea is uh, to ask our teenagers to line up with a specific purpose, okay? Mm -hmm. So they have to stand up, talk to each other, discuss the topic, the, the the main question and then line up. For example, it could be uh, asking them to line up in order of birthday. Okay, mm -hmm. so students would stand up, talk to their peers, and oh, uh, when were you born? Oh, December. Then you go last at the end of the line. Or I'm March. Okay, you February. Okay, you go. Uh, you go first. I go after you. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's uh, the idea of lining up. Uh, informally, to informally discuss, to make decisions, but in a set mm. time. Well, a, apart from birthdays, I guess you can use any other topic, right? Yeah, you can use different topics. Uh, you can ask them to line up depending on if they are pasta people or pizza people. Hmm. Or you can even ask them to uh, get organized by favorite flavors or in alphabetical order, or if you like cats and dogs. I mean, that's okay. that what's really important in this activity is to give very clear instructions. A shoe size, very good. Oh, Patrick. yeah, shoe size is a great that's idea. A nice one. Yeah, yeah, that's a perfect idea. So great idea. very, very, very important instructions and a set time. You can use a timer like we did hmm. now. You can use a timer and give them maybe two minutes. And a good so, side effect, um, sorry, Chris, a good side effect of this activity is mm -hmm. that once they are lined up, you can then um distribute them into groups because they've been randomly grouped so if you want to use it for grouping for grouping students then that's a great uh, opportunity as well okay well wouldn't a side effect be too much noise well i think uh these activities aren't noisier than any other speaking activity actually brain breaks help with classroom management students mm. refocus and can start another activity with a fresh view they can feel more energized they, ha they are having fun and all this can lower their anxiety levels and mm. it can add some spice uh, to the class because uh, you know chris that our students well-being is very important and we as teachers have a huge effect on them. So we should also uh, think of uh, activities that can help them uh, feel comfortable in the class. And I think brain breaks uh, are good for this. Mm -hmm. um, I agree. Because, yeah, I, I think uh, all these break breaks we've seen are more kind of exercise, energizing break breaks, energizing, sorry, brain mm -hmm. breaks. 
But sometimes what you need is the class to calm down. Sometimes they need a settlement break. And it's then when you can use breathing. I think, I think some of the teachers already said this, using breathing to uh, calm down students, uh, relaxing them, uh, keeping away from anxiety. Uh, mm. There are many uh, to channel their energy, Mohammed. Yes, uh, exactly. That's a good point. Um, yes, totally. And I think there are many, many breathing activities that you can do. Uh, but I'm going to show you one uh, here. Um, you can ask your students to, uh, I mean, they can sit down on the floor, but they can also sit down on the chairs. And you can ask them, right? To to put their fingers, so it's uh, the forefinger, the middle finger, mm -hmm. with your thumb. It's a little, for me. It's a little bit difficult. I don't know for you. And then with the, yeah, with the, the these two fingers, right? Yep. I'm using my right hand, right? Uh, you have to cover your left nostril. Pay attention that we are crossing here as well, right? So from the right. Uh, from my right hand on the left nostril. And here we would ask a student to breathe deeply five times, like. Mm -hmm. Okay, five times. And then we would do the same with our other hand. So we put it like this. With my left hand, I would cover my right nostril. Mm. Okay. Okay. So I think. It, it can take what? Yeah, a couple of minutes, three minutes, depending on how long you want okay. to do it. And I think uh, it's a great activity for settling down, down. I mean, I use it sometimes if I get really stressed and I think it works, it works well. And mm -hmm. um, after this, uh, students can improve their effectiveness of intellectual activities and might be more likely to learn as the concentration would probably be higher uh, than before the breathing exercises. Okay, so it seems like the brain breaks have, have many purposes. Uh, do you think we should be, uh, two questions, do you think we should be planning them and, and how often should we use brain breaks, Monte? Um, the same as we plan uh, our lesson uh, with activities and warm-ups and wrap-ups it's advisable to think of including one or two brain breaks a session uh, mm -hmm. let's say every 20 30 minutes um, and it's important to include one before the students get too tired um, sometimes students might be very engaged in the activity then just let them do the activity do not stop them if you see they are really engaged uh, but some other times you might see the activities not working, they are getting a, li a little bit anxious, then mm. you can use one of those very short brain breaks so that you can change the dynamics and activate and create a better atmosphere, right? Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so, that's great. So, Chris, oh. <laughs> we're going back. We're going back. I think, I think <laughs> we're going I'll, back. I'll, I'll go to the chocolate cake now. <laughs> okay. okay. It's gone. Sorry. Uh, oh, oh. Yeah. I, I finished okay. it when the, that's not why the camera was off though. Oh. Um, but these, these brain breaks, so putting them in the lesson plans, it, it does seem like the right thing to do, but um, I, I just kind of would like a little bit more clarity on why we were, we were doing some of these things. So why were we repeating carrot cake every time we said the word students, for example? Yeah. Well, this, this activity um, is, is short, but it's recurring. So it lasts for the period of time you decide, as we were saying right at the beginning of, mm -hmm. um, of this se the second session, right? From a question mm -hmm. uh, from one of the participants. Um, the idea is uh, to work with uh, a word or a phrase which might be a little bit difficult. As mm. we said before, I mean, carrot cake is, I mean, that was an easy one, but mm -hmm. I mean, we can still work here on, uh, for example, stress, word stress, it would be mm -hmm. good to, to use it. Um, but uh, we can use it for uh, difficult words. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, those words students always get wrong, uh, for example, with pronunciation. 
um, at least uh, for Spanish speakers, uh, the word vegetable um, mm. is so difficult. We always get it that vegetable and, and you know, weird mm. pronunciation. So we might use a difficult, a difficult word, for example, or a content word we want it to, we want them to practice. Okay, I think it's quite okay. uh, student centered. You can use it in a face to face class, you can use it in an online environment like here. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, as you can get a little bit tired, you can set a specific time to use mm -hmm. the activity and then forget about it. Right? Okay, then thanks for that. But uh, with the food, stay on the food. How about the mushrooms? Why did we do that one? Well, these mushrooms are not good for food, but <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, in this case, with the mushrooms, the emphasis is in the whole phrase. Because Kara mm. was like very easy. Oh, thank you very much, all of you who are typing little <laughs> red poisonous mushrooms. Thank you very much. Um, in this case, um, there's something more challenging in the phrase. Can, can you tell me, uh, in terms of language, Chris, what do you think is challenging from this phrase? Yeah, so, so I, I guess you'd be using it for the adjective order. Exactly. Adjective mm. order, I think, is a very complicated linguistic area, uh, for, at least for non-natives, and it's nearly impossible to learn by heart. Um, at least in my, in my experience, um, it's, it's always been a nightmare just to learn uh, what, uh, the adjective order. So a good way of helping students with this adjective order is to expose them uh, to it as often as possible and in mm. different contexts. So I'm sure that they'll deal with adjective order in the course books, with exercises, with some practice activities, mm -hmm. but it's also nice to practice them informally in the class. And if you do mm. it in a fun activity, even a little bit competitive activity, even better. You know that repetition is key for learning. And in this example, they can learn that size goes first and then goes color. And mm. they are learning it in a very nice way, easy way. And you can always go back to this phrase and use it as a reference uh, if they get the order wrong. So it can be a very good way to uh, deal with uh, adjective order. I chose adjective mm. order, but again, you can use different uh, sentences with different purposes that like we said before, pronunciation, word stress, sentence stress, which is, I think it's so difficult to teach and to get for non-natives. Um, and you can also use tongue twisters. To, uh, mm. There are plenty of tongue twisters to practice um, in the class and, in a, in, as I said, in a very fun, informal way. Mm. Right? Okay. So it looks like there's a, uh, a riddle in this one. Yes. Well, I love riddles. I'm, I'm, I'm very bad at riddles, but I love them. Um, but please don't type the answer. I know you're going to type the answer. <laughs> but, <laughs> just try not to type the answer, okay? Are, are um, they good for brain breaks, riddles? Um, well, riddles uh, do not involve movement. That's like the little, uh, like the difference to uh, the other activities, some of the brain breaks we've seen, but mm. they change the focus of the class. And mm. that's the idea of a brain break, uh, to change the focus. Teenagers would probably, um, will have to apply their problem solving skills. They'll have to think outside the box to get the answer. And this change in that dynamics can also refresh the lesson and again, we can use some, some target language we want our students to learn. Uh, but the most important thing is that you're changing the dynamics. If you don't want to have uh, movement in the class, if you don't want to be uh, very noisy and have a quiet activity, but still break uh, the dynamics and um, get them refreshed, you can use uh, riddles. And if they are in the class, if they do not have access to the internet, they won't be able to Google it. Uh, <laughs> you'll have them, well, and if they do, well, what can we do? But uh, right. the idea is um, to have them think 
of something different. When you're, when you're thinking of something very specific, you focus all your concentration on that. And that's the idea, just to break. So okay. let's, save, let's save the answer uh, till the end. Okay. So, Monty, it seems like we've seen many of these brain breaks. In a nutshell, uh -huh. what, yes. do you, what do you think are the characteristics of brain breaks, if you could summarize it for everybody? Yes. Uh, the characteristics of brain breaks, as you can see uh, on the slide, uh, are that they are short. Uh, mm. As you've seen, they are so short. They most times involve movement. Uh, they are a change in dynamics. And they involve the whole class as well. So most times we don't uh, do brain breaks in pairs. We don't do that much. Uh, we try to have them with the whole class. Mm. Mm-hmm. So how about the, uh, the objectives? They seem simple, but I've seen that they can fulfill quite a few purposes. Yes, Chris. Um, they, let's say, they activate blood flow to the brain. That's great, Mine and Agnieszka. You were so quick. Oh, You're okay. paying attention. Yes, and it's a very long phrase. Okay, so um, they activate blood flow to the brain. They energize students, or they can calm down students, depending on your objective. Uh, they refocus attention and keep students engaged, which is uh, what all teachers want uh, in our classes, to keep our students engaged. And the good thing about this is that uh, you can have fun as well. And students uh, can get these short periods of rest where they can stim uh, stimulate and have a nice time. Mm, Frida says don't eat them. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. Good advice, Farida. <laughs> okay, so teachers, um, just think of what brain breaks you are going to use in your classes. Uh, start typing them in, in the box because mm -hmm. we are starting to wrap up. Yeah, this kind of question, okay. as, as they're putting in some of their ideas, Monte, it seems like a typical wrapping up question. Mm -hmm. Yes, we can use easy questions to wrap up. Uh, when we are wrapping up, what we want is to conclude the session, to finish it in a nice and, and, and in a way where you feel that you have ended the end of, um, of a process, right? Um, so questions like what have you learned or write down something interesting from the class um, mm. can be interesting questions you can also use sticky notes right sticky mm. notes and ask them maybe if they don't want to talk in front of the class they can write down on a sticky note and place it i don't know on the whiteboard or um, on a wall around the class and if you are going digital uh, you can also use resources like Padlet or Menti, which are also okay. great. And going on with wrap-ups, as we said, um, uh, they are uh, activities to finish the lesson. Uh, we can use a classic. Uh, it's the ball throw. I mean, I know it's the classic, but I think it always works. Um, mm. Students, just they can just share a word they learned in the class. They can share their opinion. Uh, the ball is just excuse for them to participate and to do some reflection. Hmm. Well, actually, Monte, this kind of gives me an idea of some wrap ups that I'd like to share, if you don't mind. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Okay. So ahead. if you could just advance, so so let's take we'll take the idea of this uh, ball throw, which which I really like. Uh, we could also combine it with a, a never-ending memory concept. So in this case, mm -hmm. you know, we just ask the student or maybe a representative from a group of students to say something that they learn, and then they repeat what the student before them says what their learning point was. And it doesn't always have to be about the lesson content itself. It could just be something that they learned maybe about their classmate that day, right? Uh, so, for example, Monse, could you say something that you learned today? Oh, yes. Um, I learned Sherry Tori. Sherry Tori, can you throw me the ball? Yeah. Okay, you got <laughs> okay, it? Got it. Yeah. <laughs> Off my head. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> That's my fault. No, so, so Monse, you learned about Sherry Tori today, mm -hmm. and I learned about the mannequin challenge. 
Okay. And then the person that is after me would say, Monse learned about Shiritori, Chris learned about the Mannequin Challenge, and I learned about it, and so on and so on. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Well, if you like that idea of the never-ending something, there's one more activity. If you could forward the screen, I'll, I'll share. And rather than the memory, I call this the never-ending sentence. It's mm -hmm. very similar, but in this case, you know, we state what we learned collectively, trying to make a never-ending sentence, but just one word at a time. So the idea of the stem sentence, if I said, in today's lesson, I learned that warm-ups are, what would you add to the sentence? Warm-ups are very. Okay, I'll say useful. Warm-ups are very useful for. Okay, I will say engaging and so on and so on, right? So the key is, is that, again, this is student-centered. They're adding the vocabulary and, uh, and we move along that way. Mm. It's an evidence of learning, basically. Like a lot of these things, you know, they're, they, the wrap-ups can feel like a warm-up, but you want them to be including stuff from the lesson that they did. Yes. So that evidence of learning is, this, is a slight twist from the warm-up to the wrap-up. So overall, Monse, what would you say in a nutshell is the main point of this whole session? Well, I'm going to use this quote by Naomi mm. Moore. Um, and this word says, learning is like exercise for the brain. Without mm. a warm-up and a cool-down, cool-down wrap-up, uh, the brain can easily feel the strain, and this can put children off learning as it hurts mm. or feels too difficult. Right? Mm. So I think it's, it's a great um, quote. Where, uh, the main point is to facilitate optimal learning conditions, I think. And, and the exercise can link us to brain breaks as well. Hmm. I agree. Okay, great. Um, so um, just another wrap up. I mm -hmm. think it's a classic as well, but I really love it because um, you have to think, you have to reflect and um, you have to come up with three ideas. Uh, it's two wishes and a star. Um, as mm -hmm. I said, it involves reflection of the whole lesson uh, or the unit or the project. It can be done in pairs if you want or individually. Mm -hmm. It can be oral, it can be written. So Chris, my two wishes and a star from this session. Um, okay, I'm going to say my two wishes. So my one of my wishes is, that teachers have enjoyed the session. Um, mm. That's a wish. And the second is that they'll try some of these ideas and I would love to hear from them. But mm. that's, that's my wishes. How about you? Ha, uh, I you know what? No Very often that you can say you can say ditto, and I, I really do say ditto. I mean it. These are these would be my my wishes as well. Uh, but Monte, uh, other than the, the wish and the star like you know the yes. thing that they liked from the lesson isn't there one thing left that we need to do before wrapping this up something about a beach i think something about the beach let's say okay we've got our last riddle now teachers you can answer the riddle let's see if you know what did you, did the beach say when the tide came in because you can also use riddles to finish your class Eric um, says, good to see you. That's pretty. I think that's very warm. Good to I, see I you. Think. Mm. Warm? Okay. Oh, I think someone spotted it. Yeah, hot. not a one. Ah, yeah, hot. that was very hot. That was Paula, very hot. hot, hot, hot. Long time no see. <laughs> 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 oh, that's great. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. Uh, well, mm. thank you. Let's, let's see if we have any questions. Sure. Uh, I guess we'll have. You, you've got about a minute for questions, so you haven't got long. Okay, <laughs> yes. Um, so one question was how to integrate them in your classroom. As I said, you try to use those um, natural uh, breaks from one activity to the other and include the break break and obviously warm ups and wrap ups at the beginning and at the end. Mm. And I think I think we covered most of them. Uh, any sites to make slides? Um, I think they were linked to the Shiri Tori. I think you did them with PowerPoint, Chris? Uh, the Shiri Tori, yeah, I was just using them from our Oxford database. But if you were to play that 
game, you wouldn't need to be doing the images. The, the focus is on on the words themselves. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, another question for warmups, Chris. Um, how much time uh, should warmups take? Uh, good question. I, I try to, to limit it to about five minutes. If there could be a transition into an activity where it doesn't feel like the warm up is completely over. But mm -hmm. what I want as far as you know, getting everybody involved as quickly as possible with lots of answers, I would say up to five minutes, but maybe less. I mean, in the beginning, when we did the guessing the date about how old is the first book from Oxford, you know, something like that. Yeah, just a couple of minutes, I think. Yeah. Good probably, time, probably time for one more question. Okay, let's see if we have any more questions. Um, I Charlie think that has asked about attention grabbing for toddlers. Yeah. Mm. Um, well, uh, we prepared this, these activities for uh, secondary students, for teenagers, but mm -hmm. I'm sure that if you try to adapt them, uh, obviously no writing activities, everything very visual, I'm sure you can have them. Um, well, actually, uh, little children have shorter attention spans, so mm -hmm. you'd probably have to have breaks more often. Uh, mm. So uh, activities won't last for 20 minutes or 30 minutes. They will have to last five minutes, maybe. Yeah, probably a lot of those brain breaks that you had of, you know, moving the hands left and right, yes, up and yes. down, the thumb in front of the eye. That would breathing, get their attention. The breathing yeah. as well would probably do okay yeah. well, thank you I everybody it was a great session oh, uh, so with much. you teachers uh, with chris it's been fun um, Monte. thank you it's been really fun thank you very much for your participation for interacting so much for mm. typing so many carrot cakes and little red <laughs> poisonous mushrooms <laughs> that uh, i would really appreciate it thank you very much Thanks, guys. Thank you very much, uh, Monte. Well done for doing all the legwork in the second half there. And uh, Chris, right. thank you for being a voice. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very, bye -bye very much. Uh, to the, the question that uh, for any of you, the last question you answered about toddlers, I would also say to Farida, get a hold of a recording from yesterday's webinar because there was lots of activities to, for, for toddlers in, in yesterday's webinar. But let's turn our attention to teenagers, and thank you. I, I, I really should have come up with a brain break and a riddle to give you to finish with, but um, I, I will do that. I'll think of one and send you it by, by email. So thank you so much, uh, Monte. Thank you so much, Chris. Uh, you, may turn off, you, you may turn off your microphones and your cameras now. And just to remind uh, the audience that... Um, as we come to an end that we have recorded the session in fact i'll stop the recording in a moment i'll do it now while i remember and